Pete. It wasn't really that blue. It wasn't was it? really blue. It wasn't was that, that rock and roll. Was that, what was that? What do you even call that? It, well, it was take. It sounded a bit like um, yeah. my girl, dude. Didn't it? it sounded a lot like my girl. Didn't yeah, it? but that's that was in skiffle. Tea, I don't know if it's skiffle. I don't know. It's good because this guitar is kind of. It's got that natural compression going on because I don't have any compression on. But well, today Sorry. we are looking oh. at. Well, probably history. the guitar that I think, you know, all the really good session players and guitar players of all time, mm. I think, would generally say that the 335 is the ultimate, most versatile guitar They would ever. like to do that. Whether uh, that's true or not, of course, <laughs> is, is a matter of personal opinion. But when you talk to people like, you know, uh, Larry Carlton and Robin Ford and... Marty McFly... Marty I mean, McFly. it wasn't, it was wasn't a, actually, but you know, anyway. Was a, yeah, it was, it was a shape of this. And, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an iconic guitar, you know. It is. It, it, after the, the Les Paul, the Strat and the Telly, it's... it's Clapton. It's, it's definitely probably the next most iconic. It's either that or a BC Rich Warlock. Um, <laughs> <laughs> one of the two. Yeah. So as of um, when uh, Gibson's uh, had their big change of ownership back in sort of 2017... Uh, lots and lots of things have happened since then to try and realign uh, Gibson's production Get to them make it back. Yeah, better and easier to understand mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. So as far as um, the ES series is concerned, electric Spanish, allegedly. You know, not is even, it? Not even allegedly. It's what it is. Wow. Electric Spanish Whoa. guitar. Yeah, who knew? What, back in the 50s. What were they thinking? It looks so much like a Spanish guitar. This. Um, so, uh, yeah, so the, the ES range from uh, Gibson used to be made uh, out of Memphis. And it was always a, a weird kind of production thing for Gibson that they'd make solid body guitars in Nashville and they'd make semi-acoustic guitars in Memphis and Custom mm -hmm. Shop was in Nashville, mm -hmm. but in a, a separate kind of facility. Um, so I guess it made sense for Gibson to... Uh, centralize that uh, so everything now is made in nashville apart from acoustic guitars which are still made up in bozeman montana oh, because montana. the climate's better for making acoustic guitars apparently yeah um so the uh the easy way to understand now when you're looking at a 335 or any of the es series from gibson if it's got a year in the model number then it's custom shop and it's built super high-end historically correct level and if it hasn't got a year in the name like an es-335 standard or something that'll be made alongside things like the les paul standard in the like the normal nashville uh, facility oh, smells so, good, so today pete and i are looking at so the good. current uh historically correct 335s that gibson yep. make in their custom shop and we have this very beautiful 59 Ooh, from yep. obviously a repro of a 1959 335 
1961 Oof, with the Dots. 61. And uh, a 1964, which is probably the best known for Clapton, isn't it? Clapton played. Uh, really? Didn't play? 64? Didn't play no, 60? I think generally most musicians in the world would recognise 64 as an important year because that's when Anderton's uh, started. <laughs> yeah. Never mind the Beatles or 335 changes or anything like that. No, no just you're Anderton's, right. I think because that's completely right. when I saw it kind of the first time. With the, with Did he the, have a 64 the, then? He had the, he had the block in, in, didn't he? Blocks, yeah, he had the mean? blocks, yeah. So not the dots, the blocks. Um, and I, when I got mine, I, all I wanted was one with blocks in it, because I think it looks absolutely awesome. They didn't have one, but so so what they what Gibson are doing now is that they are because we went into the Gibson smell them. How good does that smell? The it whole room, so the aroma is so authentic in this room right now. It's incredible. But Honestly, when we went to the, what uh, is it? Who, name <laughs> name a good like. Uh, like Ralph Lauren, if you're watching, please, you need it. You need it. Forget your polo aftershave. Old Spice. There's a good bridge. Yeah, just you know, can we have smell hide, of nitro? Hide glue and nitro. Oh yes, yeah. <laughs> smell of wood, hide glue and nitro, guaranteed to give any man wood. Uh, maybe but any this woman be a, as well. Well, it would be a female perfume, wouldn't oh, it? Oh, it's so good. If your wife smelled like that. No, I don't know. It's like, oh, what's that smell? It's lovely. I want to smell like this. You want a candle. You want a candle for the boys. So the the, the 335 came out in 58. There there has been in the past 58 reissues of the the 335. Yeah. Currently, 59 is the earliest repro they do. Yeah. It's... um, do Some they the- do the whole thing where they measure? Like I was saying, we we, we went into uh, the Gibson showroom recently and had where they measure everything up. Oh, for so that's shizzle. what they're doing now, isn't it? They're taking an original fifty nine, they're measuring the neck, they're measuring the you know, as you see the horns on this, for instance, which we get to in a bit, but completely different. Yeah, which I've I never really noticed that much before. But so you got this kind of maple ply body on a three three five. That's going to be the same on all of this. It's like uh, three ma- maple poplar maple ply. Um, <laughs> With a solid maple centre block, so some other brands refer to, to semi-acoustics as either centre block guitars or completely hollow. So the 335 is a, is a centre block guitar, meaning it's solid all the way from the neck down to the end pin. Yeah. Just the sides are hollow. Ho- hollow. Hello. Uh, we have a, a hello. <laughs> mahogany neck, solid mahogany neck, which mm-hmm. you can see nice and easy on the on the natural one to see where that's joined. Um, yeah. With a, you know, a glued in uh, long 10 on... Uh, design, which means that the, the neck actually sits underneath the neck pickup as well. Mm-hmm. Um, vintage tuners, uh, the 59. So all three of these have um, a neck carve, which is period correct. Always difficult, I think, to really nail down what was the correct neck carve for that year, because of course, back in the day, so few of these were made. They were all done Friday you know, afternoon by, by luthiers who might yeah have a you wouldn't necessarily have had the the tools to 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 you know none of this was like cnc or anything no. so you get some a little fatter some a little thinner some a little rounder whatever but i think you know like the idea are, on, on a, yeah on a, on these reissues it's the same degree of of hand manufacturing but they'll have templates now that that they'll be a much more consistent which they know, which they as far as i'm aware they've they've taken from like one 59 and 161 Absolutely. and then that's the one they'll they'll go for so so of the um, three the skinny one is the 61 yes. yeah and the uh, and, and pete and i'll swap the the, the the 59 and the 64 around and see how they feel different they've got um what are called custom buckers custom buck is a bucker is a sort of a generic term that gibson will use in their custom shop just meaning it's wound to be like the ones that they would have typically found on a, on yeah. a 59 uh, 335. There are now Nico 3 magnet. Uh, and, and all it's really this is the same. In, pretty in, simple. It's all the same in all the three guitars. Um, yeah. Switching and, and um, components. I'm, Pete and I are both plugged into similar amps. So, um, you know, hopefully you'll, you'll get a, a similar kind of idea of the sound, but it's just a... Lovely big clean There's sound. There's rings. I'm, I'm strumming pretty softly. But... He's strumming uh, it softly with his song. I, I instantly enjoy the fact that the guitar sounds very in tune. You know, that kind of, that lovely, it's very, wholesome uh, yeah. intonation that you get. Bridge. Ooh. 
still bright and jangly with some edge, but maybe not not the edge. As a, yeah, not not as aggressive sounding as perhaps something like an SG might sound with a with a bridge position. It's got it's, that hollowness from the yeah, hollow body. It's definitely you know it, it's it's closest sounding. Uh, solid body guitar really is a Les Paul. You know, it's 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 designed to. It's yeah. in that kind of ballpark. <laughs> it's just a, it's just a it's great very, very sound, close. and you know, with a, uh, I use a Greer light speed a lot for that kind of. I'm gonna actually. It's just, it's just monstrous. I'm gonna what go you, to the 61. You're going to, the, you're gonna go chronologically then, correct, are yeah, you? So I think that's how we do uh, it. Two different colours on the 59. Um, there's a burst, a little bit more like the one that Pete's holding, yeah. and the natural. I think. Oh yeah. I think I sold neck. one of these. It might have been a 58 to Mick Taylor. About he, yeah, he got one of those. Yeah. I think I know I sold him one. I just yeah. can't remember which one I sold him. But it was uh, was it a fifty eight? But in, it was in the natural. So when you see yeah. when you see Mick playing his three two five on that pedal show, it's gonna look a lot like this one. Yeah. Um, hard to really. Uh, we'll we'll come to the end when, when we just talk about generally how Pete and I feel about Gibson guitars when we make that leap from the standard series to the the custom shop because it's a big price jump, but it's just. It is what it's it is magic, you get when you pay magic for Magic starts yeah, to happen, doesn't it? Magic anyway, needs to go in there. Let me have a listen to you. You, you give yours a, 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 a blow. Okay, I've got a creaky chair today. We'll make sure we we'll fix that for the next. It's a great name for a band. Creaky chair. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so, so this neck is definitely much, much slimmer than any of the other ones. Um, I wonder what the thinking was there. I mean, certainly you, you, we saw the, the Les Paul neck get slimmer from sort of 58 through to 60. But not this but slim. This, not is, to that this degree. is super slim. I mean, this is even slimmer than my classic Les is it, Paul. Is it true that the, the, the guy who designed the, the 61 335 also designed the Ivan S gem for Steve Vai? <laughs> it could be. It could, it could very well be. It's that slim. I mean, I Really? Think, yeah, yeah. It's, okay, cool. It's very, very slim. Uh, but here's just some clean tones on the, on the neck pickup. Again, the Elnico 3 pickups here. And again, the same configuration, you know, where I think that's why the, a lot of players, um, session players like, you can fiddle around and get so many tones out of it, you know, so. That's just a clean with so a bit good, of finger. got that natural compressed Do you know what as well you look professional <laughs> now with that <laughs> that's with, the first with, time. The, with the vos that's the finish time. on the 335 you, and i can let you've turned up for the session and i'm the producer of this and i've just gone definitely, yeah definitely he looks, the right he looks uh, definitely booked the right he looks person. like he knows what he's doing <laughs> yeah so um i mean Just a nice tone. It is. Um, two pickups together. That's super different from that one when I played in the beginning in the intro. Right. There's a, it sounds very different. It's, there's much less sound coming out of it. I prefer the sound of that. Do you? Yeah. Even though it's the same pickups, weird, well, isn't it? Bigger but maybe neck, it's smaller, bigger neck, bigger horn gives you know? different tone. Smaller horns uh, gives different different squeaks. And again here, that's when you can sort of roll down the the bridge pickup to get maybe a little bit less. You know, and then the other way around, I can turn that down. You know.
Maybe just a Mjolnir with a little bit of drive. Nice squeak on the back pickup, clean. Oh, Ooh, so mm. chill. Oh. Much more power into the into the amp, uh, the Mjolnir here again. Turn down the gain, maybe just so it's slightly crunchy. Is that is that the it keeps going that tone the note. I, I do love a 335 and I don't play my 335 red, enough. We've both got standard 335s, yeah. haven't we, from a similar era, around mm -hmm. about the 2000 mark, I think, haven't mm. we? 2005, I think mine is. But right. I, I think if I had a, a custom shop, I would play it much more because it's great. Um, do you remember I just played with JSS, uh, George, and he, he really loved it. But there's something about that guitar that never completely connected with me. It's great, but it's lacking. When I pick one of these up, I'm like, yeah, hundred so percent. I think that's what that, I think that's the whole. And I feel really magic. bad that three grand I magic. Feel, I feel really <laughs> bad that you know that what we're essentially saying is that you can is that you can walk into a guitar store and buy a, a Gibson Les Paul Standard or a three three five Standard, you know, which is going to cost you two two and a half thousand quid. Yeah, might even be a smidgen more for a three three five now. And that somehow we're sort of going, but actually there was a better one in the store, you know, like that kind of. Yeah, but it's another but, three grand. Yeah, but it, but that is the, that is the deal, and and I think, it's kind of dangerous. I think if you own a Les Paul Standard or a three five Standard, it's kind of dangerous to go and play a custom shop one, because you'll then go, you'll just, it'll be like, oh no. Yeah, you'd be slightly. It's like there um, is like, there's another level. It's like if I want to, you know, and then and then, I don't know. Can I have the. The skinny one. I just want to yeah, feel how Yeah, we are going to we are going to wash our hands afterwards. Okay, and we are going to we wipe use these hand down. sanitizer and everything all the time. Yeah. Um, so just because why we got that sound that tone fresh in our mind. Do you know what? I I, I know we're not supposed to do that, but just to, to, that's mo thicker. It's definitely this is definitely the skinniest one. Yeah. But I was kind of expecting you to be. It's I, super it's skinny. Just, it this feels like. A 1960, like a, a 1960 Les Paul, and this feels no, more like a, a 58 or it's a 59. It's super Les skinny. Anyway, I'm gonna just play this really quick while we got the clean tone fresh in our heads. So here's the neck. It's just, it's just a fatter. Is that all the tone rolled up? Yeah, everything. That's up. What I'm saying is fatter. It's a really different sound, yeah, isn't it? Very different sound. Same pickups and everything. I mean, so that, I that prefer this. That color this, always had less treble this, than this. This color sounds better. <laughs> it just does. I mean, can we not forget that a lot of people play? Rock and roll on these guitars with the, with the. It's just a Dane. I, I've never met the dude, and, and apologies because I, I, I forget his name. But the, the guitar player in Jules Holland's band, yes, who, yeah, who yeah, will yeah. who will back you play some any bond. artist from you know sixties, mm -hmm. you know soul, yeah, what his name? whatever, right know. through to you yeah. know modern rock stuff, yeah. and it's like three three five for everything. Yeah. I mean, it just sounds great. It's like sound so. Good.
take the tone down a bit. Volume a bit. Volume and tone all the way up. This, this guitar is awesome. It's, it's great. And this is the color I always wanted, the red one. I did Jim, something was that the, because, the, did Chuck Berry make that famous or did Marty Brown McFly one. make it famous? Marty McFly was the guy. I always... And I watched the film. I just wanted to play guitar. That was it. It's it. Done. It's a very, uh, do you know what, it's it, it's it. Okay, so this is not an optical illusion. Pete, hold your guitar up like this. Can you see how the horns have changed between uh, 61 and 64? So the block inlays are probably the first thing you see, but the horns are a little pointier on the red one. Yeah, you've got and fatter I, horns. And I think that the kind of, for me, it almost makes the red one look a little bit more like a 339. It looks smaller. Um, it does it, look smaller. Yeah, so, but, so I, I think visually, although I like that color and I love the block inlays, I think I would, I would you can probably get that end up red. with, I think the sunburst, the, the burst on the dot for me is, is the one I like the best. It's very classic. Is that like a, I know that the Larry Carlton, actually yeah. Larry's I think has got block inlays, but his is a much redder burst, isn't it? Mr. 335 as he is called. And you excitingly on, on, and his, um, his new guitar brand uh, launched this year, si uh, the, the Larry Carlton series by Sire. Yeah. And I think they arrived this month. Really? Yeah, well, I think we'll so. have to look at them. Um, anyway, we, I digress. You do. Um, could you, Pete, I think we'll, we'll kind of, Jam out, because it's always fun to jam. It's the only reason I basically come to work is to jam with people. <laughs> uh, could you kind of do a clean strum strum from like 59, 61, 64, starting with this one? Yeah. So, and, and like maybe just go, I don't know, like a very brief 30 second, like what do you think of each one, but with the same tone so that people can kind of hear it. Um, again, I, I think you've just got to, I know, I know that these guitars will be priced, but I don't think we've talked about price, but oh yeah, the neck is... you know, you're, you're talking the thick end of five grand, really, if you're going to buy anything, Gibson Custom Shop. Mm -hmm. um, check links below. We've got photographs of all the stock that we have and, and more details on it. But it, it's really now, and for the last probably five years or so, Gibson have been trying so, so hard to, to make the repros as accurate as they possibly can. So the production techniques, the glues, the dyes, mm -hmm. um, the way the pickups are wound, yep. uh, the, all that attention to detail. Uh, so, it, you know, big, big seed change from, from perhaps what brands, I mean, if you go back 15 or 20 years, most of the American brands, they were doing like a nod towards something old, you know, but yeah. there wasn't necessarily, you know, they'd get the color right or they'd get the shape right, but they wouldn't necessarily go to the level of going, yeah, but but is the plastic pickup surround correct? You know, it's just like, whereas nowadays it's all that stuff. So it, it's kind of like, you know. Yeah, high glue, all, all, the, all the things, mm. all the things and the blings. And I, and I love, you know, again, I like this. I, I do think one of the things Gibson nailed in their custom shop again, going back six, seven years, whatever, was this concept of the VOS finish. So it's a nitrocellulose lacquer mm -hmm. gloss finish, but mm -hmm. just, they just take that that brand new shininess off the, off the coat, don't they? So yeah, that it makes comes it so much better looking just, for me. Yeah, it's just got that slightly more authentic sort of, but not it's not a relic or an aging or anything like that. It's just kind of taking that edge off of it. They even do it on the hardware. Even and the, the hardware's smell. just got that very brand new shininess removed from it. Oh, the smell. Anyway, look, yes, please, Pete, let me not interrupt you anymore.
I don't know what I prefer. I think this, I think I prefer this on the neck pickup is best. This pickup sounds best on the neck. And then, so that's the lightest one, which is funny. I well, prefer I the neck on this. It's got the least wood in the, the neck. The least on that wood, one, isn't it? so but it's slightly lighter, but it doesn't feel like this the one, neck is lighter. What, what, did, what did you all think? I mean, they're, they're clearly all, it's not chalk and cheese, you know, they're all in the same ballpark. Yeah. This one here, and I wonder if it is to do with the lightness. This one to me sounded like it had the most acoustic kind of tones to it. Well, it was loud, wasn't it? Oh. But I just, I thought there was something about this one. Can we just, just try it really fab. quickly and unplug it and then just go. It's a great sound. That sounds louder. Yeah, that's more, more jangly, isn't it's it? More jangly. Then I need to wash my hands after this. We will. There we go. Much less. That's, it's that's the quietest that's one. That's the most solid body sounding one, isn't it? Yeah, because the, the neck is probably fat. I don't, I don't know, know, but I think I actually, I honestly, well, look, every, this is the beautiful, beautiful thing with the guitars. There's no right or wrong here. There is no best one. There's only the one that the, you like best, or yeah. I like best, or you like best. Yeah, um, I like this best, I think. I think I, I think prefer I would, that, but that one plays. I lovely. think I would take a 59 in, in, in the burst finish. You'll take the 59 me. in the yeah, burst one? I think so. Oof. Um, I'm, I'm but, really torn. I could imagine having both, or all three. Are you torn <laughs> like just, Natu, Natalie and yeah, Brulia? Na, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, not much else to really tell you about Custom Shop. I mean, it's, it's a, it's, you know, I, mean, I think Pete and I just, we're in crazy fortunate position to get to play this stuff and, yeah. and even own some of it. They're stunning guitars, absolutely. But, you know, bo both Pete and I have Custom Shop Les Pauls. Uh, I think one day, I mean, one I, day I'm, I'm going to do a three three five just because they're just. Yeah, I would would like to swap mine out for a costume shop at some point, and I I'm really interested in the casino, uh, the Ebiphone made in America yeah, yeah. one coming with the um, with the P90s in it because that looks 
Because it's, yeah, like it's like a honey. It's like a honey burst. But I, I think that's a. Nu- it's such a different sounding guitar. Yes, but yeah, so we, talk, we talk about yeah, we well. talk about these yeah. being anyway, center blocks, and yeah. and a lot of the Gibbs, you know, a lot of the Gibson semi acoustics are. But the Casino, the Epiphone, that that's I think a big part of why that sounds so radically different is it's is it's completely hollow. Yeah. It's got that big kind of trapeze tailpiece and the P90. The whole thing is just a different beast. Yeah. I mean, anyway, look, anyway, so anyway, we digress guitars, again. You know, beautiful cases, as I'm sure you'd expect. Nice little certificates of authenticity. Um, if you want to know the, the serial nice numbers case. of the ones that we had today, yeah, oh. they are. Where's the serial number on this one? Uh, in the uh, well, in the sound hole on the on the on the thing. If you oh yeah, it'll be in here. Uh, I mean, this one's got. Have you got no serial number on the back of the headstock on no. there? No, that must be a 1959 thing then that they just Maybe. didn't put serial yeah. numbers on the backs of the headstock. Well, this then. has got a nine zero zero eight. Zero. Uh, this has got a much shorter serial number. This has got eight zero six double one, and this one is oh my lord uh, one zero zero one four eight. Is that an eight on a six? Let's have a look in the sound hole. It's a little easier to read. It's one zero zero one four eight. One four eight. There we are. There we go. Um, Beautiful things. I've it's oh. just. What can I say? Very lucky Stella, to play these Stella on a Friday. Stella playing Pete. Oh. All that stuff that you heard at the end well, was you. literally just the guitar into the amp. No uh, Into the DP40, nothing else. Yeah, little uh, Victory Woo-hoo. DP40. Uh, obviously, I think the neon yellow cable probably was the... Yeah, that's the... Uh, made the difference. That's the connection. Between... Um, but really lovely guitars. Well done, Gibson. Good job. You continue to uh, go to, from strength to strength at the moment. Yep. Um, I'm going to go and take some more Coca-Cola moles for my filling that's fallen out. It's a bad place to be in. Mm. And the worst thing is it's a Friday, so you've got no chance of getting a dental appointment until probably next week. <laughs> so, oh my goodness me. So let's everybody pray for Pete. Okay. Might have a drink. See you later, everybody. Bye-bye. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Not <laughs> 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 bad place. <laughs> That's what happens.